Now, the trial of Sam Bankman-Fried, the renowned figure in the cryptocurrency industry, has been found guilty of fraud in the wake of the catastrophic collapse of the crypto exchange FTX. Now, investors worldwide are grappling with the aftermath of this high-profile case, but I've got attorney Andrew Rosso joining me now to discuss. Andrew, let's talk strategy. How did they end up with this outcome uh, of the prosecutors? Good to see you. Thanks for having me, Mike. The strategy here was actually very simple. And what the prosecution did here was just present this case as a traditional fraud case. No crypto verbiage, no blockchain, nothing that would confuse the average juror, the average person in terms of what's happened here and the impact that it's caused to so many people, so many investors. Absolutely. And that's the big part of this is the understanding and that education that we've seen around crypto enhance over the last few years. Do you think it was a mistake for Sam to testify himself and jump up there? I don't think it was. I think it was necessary, but at the same time, we knew it was going to backfire. Why? Because there was so much documentation. There were so many contradictory statements from the prosecution star witness and the entire witness list that made it very, very difficult for the jury to actually believe anything that Sam Bankman was was saying, but you know it it was necessary for him to get his side out, and hopes of you know somebody hearing him. Okay, so there were some predictions surrounding this case. Uh, take us through what was happening and whether they actually unfolded and came true. So on the prosecution side, with respect to the witnesses, we did expect to hear from many of his former colleagues, his own team, you know those closest to him. That look they didn't really have much say in this. They were instructed, they were ordered to do what they did. They did know it was wrong, but they were acting under instructions. The defense at the same time was saying, look, this was just a bad business call. This was an innocent mistake. He overshot the risks. He didn't know what to do. He should have had somebody different or somebody with that expertise calling the shots. And as the trial played out, it, that's exactly what we heard. We, we heard that testimony from the prosecution's witnesses. We heard that testimony from the defense on, look, I, I made a mistake, but at the end of the day, there was harm done and yeah. the prosecution was looking for intent, not for mistake. And that's what the jury went off of. Okay, so for consumers out there, and let's talk in, uh, from a consumer standpoint, why should they be caring and keeping an eye on this and I guess, what are the ripple effects of the outcome uh, that you've seen, Andrew? Well, look, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, these digital assets have unfortunately had a bad rap for many, many years. I know we've talked about that before, you know, with the Silk Road. But Sam Bankman-Fried is not the last criminal uh, to be involved in this type of scam. He's not the last crypto criminal. There will be many more, unfortunately, but that's how this type of precedent and regulation is going to come about. But for the everyday person, we need to see real use cases of this technology, of these digital assets being used towards something. Why not infrastructure? Why not put it towards, you know, these health initiatives, global privacy frameworks, and, and giving back to these industries that we are working so hard to advance very quickly. And at the end of the day, criminals do like using crypto. They do yeah. like these you know, technologies as that vehicle, but there's so much more to it and we need to put our efforts in the right places. Andrew, thank you so much for joining me on the program, updating us about, uh, I guess, giving us a bit of a triage on what we've seen from the crypto space. And I look forward to speaking again soon. Thanks so much for having me.